last year we had the signing of an MOU with Africa Rice. And um, I recall that at the event of the signing of the MOU, we also had a technical discussion that we all agreed that we do not want this MOU to be on the shelf, but we really want to um, hold this with both hands and, and try to see what we can achieve bringing in all our aces on the table, the AUC, the political support that we can bring to facilitate or, you know, support the technical innovations being generated by Centers of Excellence and the support from UNECA, from FAO and all of the other members of the platform. Last year we had the Africa Food and Nutrition Security Day and Africa Rise put in a lot of color in the day and we still relish the rice cookies and all the rest that was brought over there. I mean, it was great to have the presence that Africa Rice brought on board. And, and I think that the meeting here for today and tomorrow should help us to further refine our strategy and help us in identifying what would be the quick wins in this, in this, in this scenario. Why are we so committed to this particular project? If you look at Africa right now, you think of rice, you immediately think of imports. Africa is importing 10 million tons of rice, costing the continent about 5 billion US dollars. Um, that is a tremendous burden for, for the governments, obviously, and the, and the African people. But I think it's a tremendous opportunity as well, because if we import so much rice, then it means that there's a market. And why don't we grab that market? And I think that is what the Africa Rice Center intends to facilitate. And uh, more and more we're thinking in a value chain uh, perspective. Maybe if you look back uh, in the past, Africa Rice Center, then the West Africa Rice Development Association was very well known for its varieties. Uh, of course, the Nierica varieties. We still want to be known for our varieties and the Nierica <laughs> varieties. And I can tell you that we're already starting to uh, work on new worthy successes of those Nierica varieties that will come out very soon. But I think we're all convinced that it is not enough to just think about technologies that raise uh, at least potentially production. We have to look way beyond production and think of uh, the value chain, think of the market, think of the consumers. What type of rice are they buying? And how can we cater to that particular uh, demand? And that means that a rice research center like Africa Rice has to think way beyond only varieties. We have to think, of course, of the inputs. How come this continent can afford paying $30 billion in importing food and agricultural products so that it can produce and even export to the rest of the world? And yet we are not in innovative enough to find ways of uh, getting $13 billion a year to finance the development of our own agriculture. There is something wrong there. But looking at it, we, we came to a realization. We said, okay, maybe the opportunities that are there, there is a market, there is an effective demand, it's clear. If we're talking for rice now, we can say there is a clear, effective demand which is uh, not uh, uh, supplied by uh, the domestic, regional, and continental uh, supply, an effective demand of $5 billion. How do we get uh, the system responding to that? But when we took uh, the issue on uh, different commodities, we said, okay, maybe uh, there is a problem of uh, perception of the extent of the demand, the opportunity there. Because of a fragmentation of uh, the market space, a long national line, uh, borders, uh, sub-regional borders, uh, regional economic community borders, a business person uh, sitting probably in uh, the office in here in Mali cannot uh, perceive uh, that uh, he or she could have uh, some opportunities uh, in uh, some place in Central Africa or uh, down uh, Eastern Africa or South Africa. We say, well, what, what if we try to work and deepen and broaden regional integration? This is the regional integration dimension that came in. And uh, the second one, we said, okay, there is also a problem basically 
farmers, the African farmers, not able to respond to those opportunities, uh, this uh, effective demand that is there. So there is some kind of disconnection of the farm stage from the market and proceeding from a market-oriented or market-driven uh, approach, we say, okay, we start from the market. We know that we have an effective demand for rice now. We say, okay, it's uh, $5 billion. How do we manage to get the African farmer connected to that market and supplying this market? And we said, okay, then we need to adopt a value chain approach which links all those stages. Otherwise, we'll be focusing on uh, the different stages in a piecemeal manner and not connecting them to each other. That's how we came up with this whole uh, concept of uh, uh, developing the value chains of uh, some strategic food and agricultural commodities within a framework or perspective of regional integration. FAO is particularly committed to agribusiness, agro-industries development, engaging more closely with the private sector. And, you know, so this, this regional study or promotion of value chains links directly into greater agro-industrialization and allowing Africa um, not, just to produ not just to produce, but actually to add value to, to its products. And we think that's a very important aspect of this work. Um, just a few words on the maize. Okay, a lot has been said about rice, but uh, I also think that the maize aspect is important, not just as, uh, as a staple food in the region, but really to provide uh, feed for, for the livestock sector which again is, is growing in importance in the region as people are becoming wealthier. They're gradually changing their dietary habits to uh, consuming more and more livestock feed. And I know that a lot of maize is also being imported into the region, not for human consumption, but to, uh, to feed the livestock sector. <coughs> Tout le devoir et l'intérêt d'avoir d'être présent pour accompagner ce processus pour lequel nous attendons un résultat très important et déterminant surtout dans le développement de l'agriculture dans la sous-région ouest africaine et en Afrique en général. The impact, because if you know, you know, like the situation before, you know, like what is the intervention is coming, and then you know, like at any point of intervention now, you know, on the project can say, well, this is my milestones, and this is what I've been achieving, and this is uh, uh, the number of farmers, you know, like, uh, which I bring out of poverty by increasing the income level, but also by making sure that, you know, they have access to food, for the uh, food, but nutritional security, which is very important. And I think uh, this initiative is really good, and uh, RTA will take the lead for the maize, like Africa Rice is doing for the rice, and we are going to work together with all the solutions, FAO, ECA, AU, URDP, to make sure that you know, like, we achieve these objectives. I was actually looking at uh, this pathway. I was going to make a comment on the last bullet, capacity building and dissemination and domestication of the RPF. And I remember the chair said, this, all of these are not cast in stone, so we can make suggestions on. Okay, so I, on behalf of the participants, <laughs> I would suggest that we take a good look at the last bullet, because the way it stands now, what I understand by it is that after the development of the RPF, we are going to share it with all the countries, we are going to develop capacity in those countries for them to be able to implement so we have everything packed into that bullet in terms of the dissemination, the implementation, and the capacity to implement. That's what I understand. So if it's possible to make that a bit clearer, so we don't develop capacity before we disseminate and things like that. Uh, I was telling Joshua yesterday that uh, this meeting is one of the best I've had since we started this initiative. 
Um, it's, it was just great discussion yesterday. We went to the point uh, where I said at some meeting, uh, I said I can attest to this. Sometimes we a lot of talk uh, around the point, and uh, but this one was really to the point. We got what we wanted to do. We know exactly where we're going. So we agreed that Africa Rice will take the lead for rice, and we'll ask IATA. You will ask IATA to take the lead for maize, and. Uh, African Union will ask Ilwi to take the lead for livestock. So I think uh, tasks are, are clear. Uh, under these regulatory policy frameworks, we will start with baseline studies, stock taking. Again, so much is already done, so I don't think there are many issues that we need to redo. It's a matter of bringing things together for these three key commodities. We also talked about the importance of mapping, mapping potential mapping the potential of value chain development for rice, for maize, for livestock. Where, where is that potential? Taking into account also, of course, the issues of climate change, land tenure, and in many cases, water will also be an issue. And next, we will work on development of, of mechanisms, policies that will help disentangle these value chains that, that we see uh, at the regional uh, level disentangle those value chains at, at that level. I think those three elements, I think that is what I retained from our uh, debates, are going to be key in these regulatory policy frameworks. It's not going to be something that will be done in, in, in one day, one year. It's, it's something, a venture that will start all together uh, using our comparative advantages uh, for at least three, four, five years, I think. For rice, if I just may say something in particular for rice, we will build again on projects that are ongoing, funded by the European Union, by CEDA, Canadian Funding Agency, and of course we will build on what we're already doing in CART, in the Coalition for African Rice Development. And, and there we have done a lot of work on national rice development strategies. And this is the moment, I think, with the support, with your support and support from FAO, again the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and the EU to lift that to the regional level. And colleagues, I think what we're saying, what we're seeing and saying is that um, we have started our engines and there's no going back. That's one key thing. The second thing is that we also recognize the fact that there is a challenge ahead of us. And we have what it takes to address the challenge. Uh, I'm sure that well, this is just the beginning. And we will snowball along the path and we will get there ultimately. Whatever lies in the path on the part of the African Union Commission to facilitate in the context of a multi-institutional platform with our core partners, AU, I mean ECA, FAO, we will do everything we can to continue to facilitate the process.